Hey, I wanted to share with you some of the ways that I've been handling my task management because this is something I get asked a lot of questions about and it's also something that I hear a lot of people say, you know, Notion's not great for task management, you should use Todoist or other apps. And I think there's lots of really great to-do list apps out there, but for me personally, integrating task management into my whole Notion space is really the only reason I think I've been able to really keep a consistent habit and uh, stick to my routines and really get a handle on what I've got on the go. And because so much of my life already lives inside of Notion, to me, the ability to connect my tasks to other parts of my life, to other resources that I'm gonna need to complete that task, just makes sense for me to have it all in one place. So the task, um, database and my sort of task management has evolved quite a bit since working inside of Notion. As I'm sure you know, if you've been working inside of Notion for any length of time, your space has probably adapted quite a bit. And I think that's pretty normal. The more that you use it, the more that you kind of learn what's not working and what needs to change. So I just wanted to share with you some of the things that have evolved for us in this process. So here I am in my master task database. Now, again, I share this database with my husband. Um, so all of our tasks live in this database. We can all kind of see what we're each working on. And one of the major changes that we've done here, which you may or may not notice some of these, is instead of having a checkbox, we're actually using a formula of done, which is based on what this status is here. So if we change the status to complete, that's gonna automatically check off that box. And that's just a really simple formula here. Equal prop status completed. Um, and then we've got a couple other ones here. So now our whole master list is actually organized by priority here. And you'll notice this is another uh, formula. This one's a little bit more complex, um, but it's basically measuring uh, if the impact is high and the effort is low, then we know that is a really top priority item. And similarly, as you go down, medium, impact low effort is um, a little less of a priority and, and so on and so forth. If there's no impact and no effort assigned, then we sort of have this like sleepy, um, it kind of defaults to being like, not a big priority, you know, snoozing emoji here. Uh, but so let's actually do this so you can see what this looks like. So I know I need to contact Nicole for a, a quote. It's kind of been on the back burner. I know that the impact of that, it's probably a pretty medium impact. And I know that the effort is pretty low. Um, and so that's gonna give it the fairly high priority. But if this is kind of low impact, if, if I give that a low, you'll see it actually jumps right back down and kind of has this um, emoji here. So basically what's happening is it's getting a score here. Um, or sorry, the time is actually manually added, but we have a priority matrix. So let me show you what that looks like here. Priority matrix. Um, and so this priority matrix has another formula that says if the impact is low, give it a three. If the impact is medium, give it a two, etc. So this is uh, just being calculated automatically. Now, it's not always the case that doing this kind of um, engineering on your tasks makes sense. And sometimes you can end up overcomplicating something and it doesn't really make sense. Um, but if you find that you're, you're struggling and things are falling through the cracks and maybe you're struggling to give things a priority, we've just been using this sort of high, low, um, impact versus effort and that's just calculated up and gives us our priority. Now a couple other ways that this is um, being used in a, in a more helpful way because I don't necessarily need to see all of Ben's tasks on the go, I just want to see what I have on the go. So I have a filtered view here that is just filtered to show me anything that's not complete and that contains my name. And again this is organized by priority. Um, and it's actually organized by uh, priority matrix because since we're using some fancy emojis here, uh, we can't really sort by this, but we're just sorting by the priority number that's uh, calculated automatically based on these two columns. Um, the other thing that happens here is we've started giving ourselves these sort of time estimates uh, and then I can summarize this and the time is actually, it's not a one to one ratio. So the one is basically the minimum unit that you can use to give something. And I think we, we sort of set that as like an hour or less. So it doesn't matter if something takes 15 minutes, it's always going to get a one. Uh, if it takes an hour, it's going to get a one. Um, and then this kind of helps buffer a little bit from over, uh, overextending and overestimating uh, how much time we have. And then digging a little bit deeper too, I can view this in a few different ways that are more helpful to me because when it comes to task management, I find 
depending on your business, depending on how your brain operates, we all think about things a little bit differently. And sometimes it's more helpful to view things by impact. Um, I also find the Kanban view is really, really helpful. So if um, you want to focus on those high impact tasks that are low effort first and then kind of work your way through. And for some people, they like to do the whole eat the frog thing where you do the, the most difficult, the highest impact, but also hardest thing to do in the morning uh, or first thing in the day. But it might be also helpful to look at effort here. So um, I want to prioritize the things that are high impact and low effort. So this gives me a really easy way to see all of this in one view. I can also see that these haven't been assigned an impact yet. So um, I know that shortening the bedroom curtains is going to, it's going to take me a, a, a day. I've got like a bunch of things I need to get sewn. And so that's probably, it, it's high effort, um, high effort, kind of low impact. It's not going to, it's not going to be a game changer. So I'm actually going to move that over here. And I'm going to assign that an effort of high. And that's going to be sorted here. You can see uh, impact ascending and uh, and then date ascending. So if anything's been given a date, it's going to show up first. I've got my blog review. That's going to be uh, high impact. And also this is going to be low impact here. And so again, you can kind of go through and say by day. Um, I know that this needs to get done tomorrow. This one is later. Eh, that one can also be later and same here later. Um, so that way I'm really able to focus on the things that I've set for today. Uh, and then I can look through, so by effort as well, low, medium, high. Um, this one's going to be medium effort. That's pretty low effort. And I can also do this by area so I can see uh, which things are consulting or personal. And it's just really easy. You can also, again, highlight a bunch of these and drag them over into the right uh, category. Change plan. Some of these are you know, personal. And I can just drag those around. And then that way, when I go back to my uh, Master Marie database, um, these will already be sorted based on uh, priority. And that'll be based on whatever I put as the low and high effort, as well as assigning a date to some of these. So another thing that we do is we will embed this view of our database by clicking on the three dots here and saying copy link to view. And I embed that in my weekly agenda template so that I can always have a really quick and easy view here. Um, I really prefer and tend to view the uh, Kanban view so I can really get a sense of what's coming up this week and that to me is one of the most helpful views is um, looking at things in sort of a week at a time and then also being able to switch back quickly and look at the master database um, but really I, I think the real power in the task management is when you start to pull your master database into other pages, other areas, your dashboard, so you can really get a good sense of what's on the go. And again, if you have other team members as well, um, I really do recommend each team member would have their own custom dashboard where you can, um, you know, people can surface and filter that by only showing the things that are assigned to them and that are not complete yet. And uh, that just makes it really easy for all team members to know what they're responsible for while you as a business owner can still have a master view that kind of shows you all of the goings on of the business. So that's how we've been doing our task management. I'm happy to share that formula there. We spent a little bit of time uh, tweaking that and just making sure that it made sense. Um, and we might change our mind over time and say, you know, maybe, maybe this priority is not is not the best. Maybe there's another way of doing that that's not just impact and effort. Uh, maybe that factors in time as well. Uh, but for now, this is what's working pretty well. And we've also integrated this planning into sprints as well, uh, which I'll cover in another video because I do think uh, breaking up your actions into bite-sized two-week sprints can be a really helpful way uh, so that you don't always have to see everything that's on your list and all of the someday maybe tasks that you might have added to your project. Um, and really one of the best tips that I've learned is just, of course, minimizing the amount of work in progress that you have. There's an excellent book called Making Work Visible that has really helped the way that I think about how I plan my space and my tasks inside of Notion. So if task management is on your mind right now, uh, you might want to pick up that book, um, Making Work Visible, and also the Personal Kanban is another really great one. 
Um, and I, I have found personally that the Kanban view organized in a couple different ways can be a really helpful way to keep on top of your work. So I hope this helps and I will share the formulas in the description below and uh, good luck with your task management.